A friend of mine recently donated me lots of these strips of hardwood. I think there are three different types of wood. One is definitely oak, one I think is mahogany and the other might be teak, but I'm not certain. They measure 20mm square and 1600mm in length. I wanted to make a few stocking fillers for Christmas and I thought I'd have a go at making some nice coasters using these three types of wood. So I sorted the wood types out into piles and then selected two or three lengths of each of the three types of wood. I set up a stop block at the mitre station at 390mm so that I could get four pieces out of each 1600mm piece and I cut all of the pieces to length. Then I started playing around with various patterns that I could create using the different types of wood. Eventually I decided not to organise them as a pattern and to go for a random placement instead. Two of the four faces of each piece of wood were unfinished and the other two had a finish on them. I wanted to remove this finish so that wood glue would adhere well to each of the four faces. So I set up the thicknesser to plane to a thickness of 18mm and ran each piece through with the finished sides facing upwards towards the blades. This meant that all of the pieces would be uniformly sized at 18mm square and that all faces would be bare wood and without finish. Then it was time for the glue up. Whenever I do glue ups I usually get stressed out. It feels like no matter how much time I spend thinking about the best way to clamp everything together I never get it quite right and this time was no different. I started by laying out the pieces for the first layer, picking out the pieces trying to keep contrasting types of wood next to each other where possible to make for an interesting design. I added glue to one face on each piece apart from the last and rubbed the pieces together to distribute the glue evenly. Then I built it up layer by layer with more glue in between each layer. I then wrapped everything in cling film. This would stop the wood glue sticking to the scrap pieces of wood to distribute the pressure from the clamps more evenly across the whole piece. I added these scrap pieces to the sides and to the top too. In hindsight what I should have done is cut four pieces of scrap to exactly the same length and width as the piece to apply pressure evenly to all four sides. But I didn't, and luckily things turned out okay anyway. Hopefully next time I do a glue up, I will get it right. Then it was just a case of adding lots and lots of clamps, and I used pretty much every single clamp that I own that were big enough to fit. I left it for over 24 hours, and the following day I removed all of the clamps. Then I could remove the cling film, which had now done its job. I used a cabinet scraper to take off as much of the glue residue as I could. And then I used a hand plane to clean up all four sides and get them as flat and smooth as possible. I put a very small bevel on the corners with a block plane too, just to ease over the sharp edges. Then over at the bandsaw I cleaned up the end of the block by trimming off a couple of millimetres from the end. Then I set my fence at around 10 millimetres and started to cut the piece into slices. My new bandsaw cut through this big block of hardwood no problem. I don't think my old bandsaw would have been up to the task. Unfortunately my benchtop belt sander broke recently so I used my handheld belt sander in a vise to sand down each face of the coasters with a 120 grit paper.
Then I used my orbital sander with a 240 grit paper. And finally I did a bit of hand sanding. I also put a slight bevel on each edge. Then it was time to apply a finish. The first finish I tried was boiled linseed oil. I just painted one of the coasters so that I could see how it looked the next day. This looked really good to begin with, it brought out the grain really nicely. The following day when the oil had dried, I really wasn't happy with the way they looked. The oil had blackened and the finish was too dark. The second finish I tried was this water-based varnish. I used a brush to apply it and once again the grain looked good when I'd applied it. But the following day the varnish had dried with a nice subtle sheen to it, but the grain looked like it didn't have any finish on at all. So third time lucky I thought to myself. I had some cheap resin based varnish left over from an old project that I'd bought from a pound shop. I figured there was no harm in trying this rather than going to buy something new. It was a gloss varnish and I didn't want a glossy finish to the coasters. So rather than applying it by brush, I'd had some good experiences with it before by rubbing it in with a cloth. So that's what I did, just dipping the very tip of the cloth into the varnish, as a little of this varnish goes a long way. I let them dry for 24 hours and this time I was really happy with the finish. To make the coasters more hard wearing and water resistant, I then applied a coat of the water based varnish that I'd tried previously over the top of the resin based varnish to seal the wood. The following day, to finish off the coasters, I rubbed in some clear Brie Wax. This would give the coasters a nice smooth consistent finish. I left the wax to dry for a couple of hours and then buffed it using a buffing pad on my orbital sander. The coasters are now finished and despite there being a few blips in the production process, I'm really pleased with how they turned out and I think they'll make nice Christmas gifts.